Are you ready to find peace in your heart? Of course you do. I'm Coach Easy, and welcome to the Cause It's Easy Show. As an empowered empath, empowering mindsets, and confidence through adversity, I will help you connect and conquer. Listen in as we talk real about serious concerns in the world and learn how by working together we can make life amazing. You are the ultimate number one in your life, and that's why you can be whoever you want and do whatever you want without worrying what anyone else thinks. Why? Because it's easy with me, Coach Easy. I believe there is a path to an easier way and having God in your life is the key. On this show, laughter is a promise and music is the spiritual language. Because it's easy, starts now. Hey, hey, what's going on everybody? Coach Easy, Because It's Easy Show. Transformation Radio Network. We're gonna talk a little bit about I feel a lot of people have fear. We shouldn't have so much fear. And then that spreads more fear. And it's not just about fear, it's about, I say you get faith, courage, trust. You have to, um, you have to give yourself a little more trust. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't trust very many things. I'm very, very cautious about things like it. Having confidence also relies on having courage to try to stand yourself, maybe put yourself out there to gain that confidence. I mean, faith helps with that too. I mean, I have faith. Um, and here's the thing for me. We all went through, not all of us, but a lot of us went through this spiritual awakening. And I'm still trying to figure it all out. I'm a learner too. I don't know everything. I know that's for sure. But one thing I know for sure is I've got a lot of courage that I never really used to have. And I've read about the Holy Spirit. And it says, one of the things it says is you, if you're, you gain courage. And there's no other explanation for it. They like to come up with and that spirit came in me and um with that obviously has to have faith because you wouldn't believe in it if it wasn't right and so without those two you should you're going to have a lack of confidence and it's not going to make you strong enough to, to do those things i know i'm never going to push God on anybody. Everybody has their own spiritual journey or their own beliefs. But I know it's helped me. And I've always believed. I just never took it serious. So for me, have faith, courage, confidence, all that takes away your fear. So we have a lot of people in fear of things right now in the country. I know that's happening a lot. I'm on social media a lot. I see it, and it's how we get ourselves in trouble, or there's something happening. It's like the news. I think I've spoken this before. The news talks about mostly bad things. Very, very rarely do you see things that are talked about that were a feel-good story. Rare, because fear sells or tragedy sells. So we've been in a funk, this whole country been in a funk. Basically, negativity. Um, I mean, it's, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I mean, we've got people thinking people are racist. We get people thinking people are, you know, bigots or against homosexuality or whatever the case may be. But I think that's that's a, a very unfair assessment because we've had all those in our lives. I'm 52 years old and I've known about all these people. There's nothing, I look at anybody differently. They just have a different lifestyle, maybe a different culture, a little different colored skin. Fuck it. They don't make no difference to me. If you're a good person and you're good with yourself, there's no reason you would think you would even need to judge anybody else. But what tends to cause a problem is when people 
aren't nice, not kind to other people, they want to find a reason. Why? Why would somebody be like that? And it causes everything else. It causes fear. It causes negative energy, man. We've never been so bad right now. We are really bad right now in this country. I don't know how many people can relate, but I'm on TikTok a lot. And I know there's like over a billion people on there. So I would say that's about the best place to, to judge that idea. There's so many different people on there. People are doing these little lives. And I know people on here. I know there's people on TikTok that maybe not know who I am, but they know that what I'm talking about. But I think a lack of courage causes people to complain. It causes a lot of people to play victim. Because they want someone to sympathize for them. They want someone to make them feel better about themselves. But you can't do that. you got to get that part down yourself. you got to feel good about yourself without anybody else's help. And that comes with being a good person and not judging other people, not calling people hateful things and thinking somebody's hateful. And I think I'm just going to talk about it. I don't usually talk about it, but I've seen something yesterday. And I'm not going to say which way I go or which way I don't go. But a lot of this country has been fighting over the politics, and that's what a lot of this stems from. And I'm here to tell you or firsthand, I don't believe either side of them is any good. I think they're all bad. But one thing I think is kind of a shame, and whether you like him or not, Trump was right away all the racist, white supremacists, right? And I didn't like Trump for a long time. But I do know one thing, he's not a racist. And I know people are screaming in their chairs right now looking at me. But no, what I'm saying, the reason I say that is because I did extensive research on him in 2019 because I hated him and my friends didn't. So I thought I'd better find out what's going on. But I found out in just, just the other day, a video, Judge Joe Brown, black judge, black man, is being interviewed by a black man and asked him the question, do you think Trump's racist? And the guy goes, I really don't think so. And I was anxious to hear the answer. And he said, first of all, he helped a lot of black business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs get loans or give them loans of his own money. And at least for one person, I don't know if they did it for all, but he made them have to come back to him and kind of give them their plan and all that good stuff. And he ripped up their checks and said, now go run your business. You want no money. Now a racist man wouldn't do that. Number two, I didn't even know this. He was he was dating a black woman. Wait, I don't remember. Judge O'Brien said he took her on the red carpet or anything else. The reason I'm bringing this up, I don't want to keep talking about him. I know people hate him, but um, because I think we do a lot of this in, in society as prejudged people because somebody told us something or because we had a thought about something he did that maybe we didn't appreciate or didn't like, or somebody, not just him, but like I've been I've been a person of trying to be the mediator. I always try to bring people together because I hate people fighting each other, arguing shit. My friends would be in a fight. I'd be the peacemaker. Once in a while, I had to get a little crazy. No, just kidding. But I've been an advocate for for one decimate. domestic abuse. I hate it. It, it bothered me. It really does. Um, but I've had friends. So, I've had so many friends in my life, and I'm so grateful to have friends from every diversity, you know, and so it bothered me, and I hate when I see blacks and whites hate me, fight each other. And I get myself caught up in that because I know for a fact that I'm not racist. But sometimes we get grouped into that. But I think it's a lot of it, people are just, a lot of people aren't happy with going on, what's going on in their lives right now. I ain't even happy. And I see, I see a still smile. No, but uh, I don't even know where I'm going here. I'm trying to go here with trying to make people see that we're not that bad. The media is making it worse on us. The media is putting a lot of stuff in our heads and making us fight amongst each other and hate each other over silly stuff. Policies we, for one, aren't even true. And then there's other things that are put in our brains. The media plays a lot of that. 
we have to quit buying into everything. We have to have critical thinking. That was one of my other things. If you have faith, courage, and critical thinking, you can make a lot of things better in your life and a lot of just your person as a person. And I think if everybody works on being a better person themselves instead of what everybody else is doing, that'll make a big difference. I really believe so. Because I don't believe anybody wants to just be being angry takes up a lot more energy than being happy. Being negative, trust me, I was a negative person all my life. And I told this story too about it three years ago. I mean, I got asked if I was a glass half empty guy, and I'm like, I think I am. Matter of fact. And they said, well, that's such a effed up way to live. Boy, you know what? You're right. I've changed. And I think everybody else could work on that. Could work on themselves a lot. Not a, nobody's necessarily bad. Nobody's, but nobody's perfect either. If everybody worried about their self, and I don't care if you're, if you feel oppressed, because we're all feeling oppressed right now in this world, unless you're rich. So I think being a better person, maybe figuring out what you're doing, who you're hanging out with, can change a lot of things and just make yourself a better person. And that feeds off into everybody else. Everybody works about self. Just worry about yourself. But you got to have some courage. You got to have some faith. You got to have some critical thinking. Because that's a big deal. Gen Xers, man, we know what, what critical thinking is about. And I think you have to use a lot more of that. And I say common sense, but some people take that as an insult. Common sense comes with critical thinking. Before you jump to conclusions because of the news said or somebody said, think it through. Like, really? Because for me, like all that to talk about Trump being racist, I know for a fact he's not. But the news and everybody else puts that in people's heads. I'm just giving that example. Sometimes we judge people by what somebody else said. We need to experience ourselves. But we're going to take a quick break and we'll get into some more. Talk about courage, faith, critical thinking. See you soon. Hey, we're back. We almost had a little problem because my tech skills always do something. But we made it. But uh, so I wonder how many people know or how many people would even I know a lot of people on, on TikTok know but if you go to my YouTube page and you kind of see I have a video on there that's I think I have it highlighted but it's a uh, talks about the feeling of awakening and all that good stuff and it's unfortunate because that's causing a lot of problems too it's a good thing that we're all awakening but if you have it then you don't know what we're going through and we do know what it was like before. So we kind of know what you're going through, but just if someone's told you they're awakened, I would listen to some of what they got to say just because it's something that we can't even, we're not trying to just be bad. We're not trying to be disagreeing, but we, we feel it. We know things, you know what I mean? It's just, it's hard to explain, but along with that comes more or less what I'm getting at is the critical thinking. Knowledge is power. If you've ever heard that word, or that phrase, and I didn't even understand. I mean, I, I get it now. I didn't get it before. When you know things, and you've studied it and researched it, and you you know you know, right? That's kind of like what awakening feels like. It's They say, when you know, you know. You don't know how to explain why you know, but you just know. And that's kind of the same feeling of something you studied. Maybe you, you, you learned about something, and you can talk about it for days, and you, you know everything, and all the insights about it. But a lot of that comes with critical thinking. I don't want to sit here and call people lazy because I've been lazy off and on my whole life. Sometimes I'm, I'm motivated, sometimes I'm not. But right now, though, I'm going through some really bad times. But my faith knows, lets me know that I'm going to be okay. Um, Steve Harvey said it. And he kind of says it a little more direct. I don't like to cuss on this show, but everything you went through, every obstacle you've been through every miserable time in your life or every time you got broken you're still here right you still made it but he's even more dramatic you made it right 
You made it. You're still here. You're doing okay. We always find a way. And unfortunately, maybe there's some that don't, and then they they don't get through it. But they most people get through it. We're still here. If you don't, you ain't trying hard enough. Because we all finally get through here. And some of us give up early, and I hate that thought. Some people end it. Some people end it, and I don't like that. But that's because they didn't have any support, I think. Sometimes that happens. I've been more alone than I've ever been in my life right now. But I know never alone with man up there. That's a good feeling to know. When you finally, if you don't have it, but when you do finally have it, great. If I cuss too much, I may be a little more opinionated than some like. It's, it's, it is what it is. My dad very, very much. I don't like to use the word religious, but very, very much into his faith. He stopped going to church one time, finally, because he didn't like the new pastor. Whatever reason he liked, still very much in faith in his faith. But he was an alcoholic. I would even say he was maybe on a couple occasions abusive. Um, he didn't like bad language though, and he didn't believe in sleeping in the same. Like he didn't believe in boys staying overnight with each other. You can. Think how you think of, I'm not going to say what I think. He just did not think it was normal. So I rarely got to do that. But he was just, he was either loved or hated, is what a friend of mine told me, or a friend of his told me one day. And I'm finding that to be me too. Isn't that weird? I didn't get along with my dad when I was younger. Um, and then he died when I was 23. But I loved to pick his brain as I got older. But I find a lot of my characteristics like my dad. And instead of fighting him and saying, no, I'm not like him. I'm embracing them, and I'm like, they can, maybe I'm going to make it better than maybe he did. I don't know. But being loved or hated, only reason that could be happening is if you're just a bad person. Or mostly times because people don't, they're jealous of you. Or they have, as long as you're a good person, if someone loves and hates you, it's because they're jealous most likely. Because nobody should hate anybody because maybe they, maybe they're a little chatty. Maybe they talk too much. Maybe they, it's no reason to hate anybody. And I think people love to judge other people. I've been caught doing it. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't give a shit. Because I shouldn't. Why should I care? But what I'm noticing in society is people judging big time. Which then makes me judge. And that's no excuse. I shouldn't do it anyway. But I get defensive sometimes. That's my weakness. But I've empowered myself so much, which I can do for you. And the courage I have, I don't care anymore. Because if we couldn't have opinions, we can't have conversations. Because we always risk offending somebody if we have a conversation. If we don't, then we can't have an opinion. So I think people also could be a little less sensitive. This is a good thing, too. I remember, so obviously racism has been a discussion lately. And it's it's crazy to me because I'm old. I'm born in 71. In fourth grade, you know, it wasn't too far after Civil War. Until we conquered the whole thing, civil rights. And what I'm saying is I had friends, a whole lot of friends that were black, right? And they were just, we were just little though, so it's not like they're going to be lifelong. You don't ever know that age. But what I do know is it never crossed my mind to judge them. And that wasn't far after the civil rights thing. So it was still fre fairly fresh. So where did we go wrong that all of a sudden it's so critically, so so out there? And what, what, what I don't like to see is people assuming something's racist because they have a different opinion. People can have different opinions. So this, this this black comedian, or he's an actor, whatever you want to call him, or both, he said one day, he goes, and this is true, I watched it when I was a kid. You have Archie Bunker, Mr. Jefferson. One black, one white. And that show was very racist. It very, very much so, by both of them. But more, more white people being racist. But it was funny. And I remember people both white and black laughed about it. And he said the same thing. He's like, both of them were stark racist, but 
people learn to laugh and not take it so serious, right? And I'm sure that sh those shows wouldn't have been on if it was that serious, right? And so I think we need to loosen up. I think people want to be offended or want to be angry all of a sudden, like for, for silly things. Even not talking about racism, talking about other subjects, people instantly get offended so easily. And I don't know what that's from, but if you start, if you have faith, and again, like I say, courage and critical thinking, you're going to know that the majority of people are not racist. You're always going to have a few fucking knuckleheads. You're always going to have a few idiots. But we as a country are more divided than we've ever been divided, ever. And it's silly. And it all stems from them stupid politicians we need to quit following because they don't give a shit about us. And once you have the courage to know that and the courage to love your neighbor, whether white, black, brown, yellow, I don't care, and we all become friends, everybody loves you, love thy neighbor, that's where God comes in. So the faith, faith thing is big. Nobody says you have to beat the Bible, but loving other people, regardless of their skin color, regardless of their culture, loving them as a human being, it's a feel-good thing. I know I feel good. I feel good every night I lay my head on that pillow because I know I wasn't treated. I didn't treat anybody bad. And if I do ever get mad or I maybe get off on somebody a little bit, I still feel bad, even though I was justified a little bit. That's my only weakness is my, my integrity being questioned. And that could be accused of lying or accused of being racist or accused of being hateful at all. I don't hate anybody. I may be upset with people because I feel like some people treat people badly for no reason. I've been treated badly over the last three years a lot. But I'm learning to control my temper and control that because I don't feel any bad. I feel worse after that. So I guess what I'm saying is however you got to do it, get that courage, but it's a lot easier to find when you have faith. Knowing God's got one last move and God's always there for you and use that damn critical thinking, man. Don't just assume things. Use critical thinking. As Coach Easy said, so I'm just kidding. All right, guys. Show went quick again, but I hope everybody, if anybody was uh got what I was saying. And I'm always open to comments. So again, till we meet again next week. God bless. Thanks for watching the Coach It's Easy Show. You have been listening to the Cuz It's Easy Show with me, Coach Easy. Empowered empath, empowering mindsets, and building confidence through adversities. Tune in every Tuesday at 3.30 Pacific, 5.30 Central Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where I, Coach Easy, will show you the easy way to make your life simple, abundant, and amazing. No matter what you have experienced in your life, you can feel positive, confident, learn to laugh, and have fun again. For more information on the Cuz It's Easy approach, visit CuzIt'sEasy.com. Cuz, C-U-Z, it's easy, E-A-Z-Y, dot com.